Hey guys, so we've got our e-bike, we've stripped it down, we've taken out the old motor, and we're gonna put the new motor in. The new motor has these three screws. I think they go all the way through to the other side. They're, they must be pretty long. What we need to do is we need to drill these out a little bit so that they're sitting flush. So that's the next thing to do. So this motor is awesome. It works perfectly with the SX500 with only slight modifications. So what you need to do here is you need to recess the aluminum just a little bit so you can get those screws all the way in so they're flush to the aluminum. The aluminum's super easy to drill into and it's fairly thick. So you're gonna go about halfway down into the aluminum so you can sink that screw in all the way down and what it's going to do it's going to stick out the other side it's a fairly long screw so the screw is going to be sticking out a quarter inch out the other side so what that means is for one of the mounting points you actually need to uh, shave off one of those screws you're going to have to cut it or i just i just ground it down with my grinder but however you're, you're going to do it you're going to have to grind down one of those screws because of the mounting points As I'm putting the motor back into the e-bike, the e I'm going to attach them to the three mounting points. And the mounting points are shown here. There's two on one side and one on the other. And you're just gonna stick it in. I threw it in upside down because that's how the mounting points uh, fit for me. Um, the bracket was just there. I didn't have to cut the bracket off or anything like that. It was just fine, it worked great. So I wanted to do another long form of this because I didn't see a lot of people on the internet who had this uh, method. And I was going to use the, the sprocket that came with it, but the sprocket didn't fit the chain. I, I don't know why I thought it would, but the sprocket that, that it came with it was uh, much too big. So you can get different sprockets um, for the motor. So I'm just gonna reuse the old sprocket from the 500 watt 36 volt motor on the 1800 watt motor and it's gonna work fine. The hardest part was actually getting those sprockets off. They were really stuck on there. So with a little bit of leverage and creativity and quite a bit of time, I was able to get it off. So not a big deal, but we got the motor mounted up and on its way. So this is what I was talking about. I'm trying to install the motor, but the motor's not gonna get go in because we have that bolt sticking out. And I'll show you right here. So the bolt's sticking out. It's that bolt right there. And I shaved it down, and now it's gonna work just fine. So we'll just connect it up and move on. So what we're doing is we're actually waiting for the batteries to come, so we're doing everything prior to that. We're getting the 1800 watt 48 volt motor connected. We're putting on the handle with the new throttle. And we're also gonna swap out the power connector for the controller to an XT90 so we don't have any sparking when we plug it in. We're really never gonna unplug it. Again, you don't really need the XT90. You could use a Dean's connector if you wanted to, but I've got them, so that's what I'm gonna use. When you make them flush like that, see how that's flush? these three bolts, one, two, and three, that's it. So these are gonna stick out that far. I just made one of them flush right here, it was right behind there. And then everything's just connected right there. I mean, that's it. You don't even need to take off the rear tire. 
Hey guys, Dave here. So today we're in the garage and we're going to be messing around a little bit with our controller. We've got our phase wires. I'm actually not sure what to do with the phase wires and how to connect them. They just have these little rings on them. The other side has the rings on them as well. I don't know if you're supposed to like bolt them together. I'm probably just gonna solder mine together because I don't know, that seems easy. And then I need a connection going to my battery. My battery's not here yet, but let's actually, let's put a XT90 connection on this for when we do get our battery. That's what we're doing right now. Alright, we have our positive and negative lead connected on there and then these come with these little, uh, this little housing, kind of a little protective thing you can clip on if you do it nice enough. I'm just going to go ahead and clip that on instead of using something else. That's it, we've got a better connection. We've got our XT90 which we're going to use for our 26 amp hour battery. That battery is going to be here soon and then we will put that together and get it all figured out. Right, thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.